Hi children, you know, think of a time when uh, your mother sister comes and uh, meets you all and uh, mommy and uh, your aunt will be speaking for a long time together, right? So probably when you were tiny, two, three years old, they would chat and chat and you would listen. What are they saying? Who is this they're talking about and all? But as you grow older, that conversation would not have been interest to you, right? You would go off if, the, if your aunt had a kid, probably you would go off to play or um, you would just not sit and con uh, listen to the conversations, right? Same thing with your dad. If you have um, some uncle or some... Uh, you know um, uh, anybody comes to meet your dad and they start talking about whatever they're talking uh, oil prices or some politics or office work or whatever they're talking you wouldn't want to sit and listen unless it's of some interest to you you'd go and do your work right now imagine if your aunt and your mom suddenly start whispering you know what happened this and that and uncle uh, let's go outside and talk then you would be inter uh, more into them what are they going to go into go out and talk now let me see right so when they start uh, speaking something which they consciously don't want you to listen your uh, curiosity is uh, aroused right so when you leave them alone and you go away to play you give them the privacy to uh, speak whatever they want same thing with your dad and uh, when they start whispering that privacy slowly moves into secrecy, right? So between privacy and secrecy, a very thin line, children. So this question was uh, thrown to me at um, one of the meetings with the child. The child said that my mom is barging into my room and uh, I don't have the privacy and, uh, you know, I don't have the freedom to do what I want and things like that. And uh, I said, uh, pondering, what is this uh, actually happening? And you know, for children who have the doors open and they may be doing whatever they want to play, either playing something or chatting with their friends. So initially, mommy would be uh, careful as to, um, you know, who's uh, ta he talking to or who's she talking to. And is she studying or is she playing some game? Initially, there'll be some curiosity. But over a period of time, ah, this boy has called and he's talking to her. Or, okay, these people chatter like this for some time, whatever amount of time. So there, there's some kind of a clarity or should I say some kind of transparency in what's happening so mommy wouldn't come and say oh, let me listen to what you're saying no that's she gives us privacy let them chat about whatever they want right as long as it's transparent people don't worry too much so that's where you maintain your privacy when you go into your room and you close the door and you insist that mommy should not come inside and you cannot be seen seeing things you've turned your private space or the privacy that you had got into secrecy and that's where risk lies right Unlike when your mom and your aunt may be whispering to each other, we don't worry about what they may be saying which might be harmful for them or maybe risky for their life or uh, you know um, whatever danger in any form. But uh, with your laptop or computer on or whatever you are doing in that room, it's very hard to know where you have cross the line of privacy into secrecy because just one turn of a button or just one uh, click of a button or one swipe of your hand you can move from what you're doing into dark web and dark web is where all the danger lies there are hackers and there are all i mean we don't have to go into all that but uh, that's where the risk lies so if your parents are coming into your room and you're insisting on secrecy ask yourself have you converted the space private space that you were uh, using to probably study or chat with your friends or play or whatever into secrecy why would you want to uh, have secrecy secrecy is always associated with shame and fear right so if any of your activities are associated with shame and fear uh, it's probably time to review it and look at it uh, is it really needed mm. am i satiating you know remember in one of those previous videos we spoke about uh, when we spoke about binge watching um, what is it that you're binge watching for was it to fit in so is this uh, attempt to have a secrecy also an attempt to fit in with some people who might be doing something i also want to be there look at it because um, secrecy studies have shown children that um, secrecy has long lasting effects especially when in children longitudinal studies have been longitudinal studies means you have a study over a period of time so they have monitored people or children from their adolescence young age to about 20 25 years the study started somewhere in 70s and it's still going on and it's very clearly shown that secrecy is associated with uh, mental illness and depression and long lasting chronic effects uh, because it's a lot of pressure to hold on to whatever you're not willing to show it adds up a lot of stress a lot of stress is added um, is uh, you know um, attracted when you move into that frame of uh, secrecy so think about it and um, let's understand clearly the difference between privacy and secrecy because privacy is my personal space but secrecy 
is involved with some emotions which are not very healthy for us to grow in okay so during these times when you have so when you're spending so much more time on the computer and uh, you can have uh, we know that there are children who are doing parallel uh, classes you have class on on one time and another window on uh, on the same computer risky right and not worth it <laughs> so there's a lot of benefits of being transparent in terms of bonding and well-being and the happiness involved so let's let's attract happiness and well-being and not stress right chalo take care all the best bye ciao